Hi, this is Pat Johnson, your sociology instructor, and in this mini lecture, we're going to answer the following questions. First of all, what is sociology? Then we're going to talk about what sociologists mean by a sociological imagination. And finally, we're going to ask, what is a social construction? Sociology is a systematic study of human society. For example, if I ask you, why are you taking this class, you might say, well, duh, I signed up for it. I have to take it for my program. But in sociology, we go deeper than that. Really, why are you taking this class? You could be taking it because your parents want you to get an education. You could be taking it because you need a Pell Grant for financial reasons. You might be taking the class because it's part of a program of study that will get you a diploma, that might get you a job, that might get you pay. So when we use sociology, we look at how society affects our individual choices. In other words, we live in a society where education is deemed necessary for our advancement in the society. And the bottom line is that's usually why most people are here taking this class. A sociologist by the name of C. Wright Mills used the concept of developing a sociological imagination. When I think of C. Wright Mills, I always think of the picture that was shown of him in my Introduction to Sociology class, and that was C. Wright Mills traveling on his motorcycle. C. Wright Mills was thought to be somewhat of a rebel and a free spirit, but more importantly, he's, a, he's known for this concept of developing a sociological imagination. So, C. Wright Mills said we need to apply imaginate imaginative thought to asking and answering questions about how the society a person lives in affects that person's life. So for example, let's suppose a person is having problems getting a job and we ask, well, why is that person having problems getting a job? might say things on the surface like, well, maybe the person just hasn't applied to enough places, or maybe the person's too picky and doesn't want to work at a fast food place. But if we use our sociological imagination, we go a lot deeper than that. We might imagine the economic opportunities in that area. Are there enough jobs? Is there a competing educated workforce that precludes a young 18 or 19 year old from getting the first job? Is the person experiencing any bias by the person doing the hiring? There's all sorts of reasons why a person might not be able to get their first job, more so than just he or she isn't trying enough. So when we use our sociological imagination, as C. Wright Mills says, we can never really understand an individual unless we also understand the society, the historical time period in which the person lives, personal troubles, and social issues. So we need to get go deeper than just the surface um, possibilities for understanding what's going on in society. Another thing we're going to look at in this course is social constructions. So what is a social construction? A social construction is an idea or practice that a group of people agree exists. So for example, a social construction might be college admissions. People agree that some colleges are competitive in who they admit and who they don't admit. This is a social construction, and colleges might use criteria such as the person's GPA or what classes the person has taken, the person's extracurricular activities, their essays, their standardized test scores. 
Some people might argue that they look at characteristics like race or gender or age in admitting people to a college. But needless to say, everyone agrees that college admissions exists and we have an idea um, among us about this practice. When we use the social construction of dating and we talk about how people agree what dating is, we can see how specific times um, might disagree about what dating is. In other words, talk to your parents or talk to your grandparents about what dating means to them. They might see dating as something totally different than you see it in your time period and your place. Another example of a social construction could be marriage. Um, some people think of marriage as only one man and one woman. In some cultures, marriage includes a dowry where a woman is exchanged for goods given to the bride's family. In other societies, as we'll see later on in the course, marriage can be between more than two people. And as we've seen change in recent years in our culture, that society, uh, American society has expanded the idea of marriage to include same-sex marriage. So the social construction of marriage is changing. It changes based on time. It changes based on the society that a person lives in. In sociology, we look at human society and we look at all the influences of society on a person's life. That's what we'll be doing this semester, seeing how society affects a person's life.